and welcome to Hedgehog Hollow and welcome to a special feature with Elizabeth Craft Designs. Today I'll be showing you how to make some wonderful backgrounds and some blazing poppies using Brusho. This is the card that we're going to create and we're going to show you a few variations on how to create some other flowers using some blues as well and also how to create a solid as well as this more minimalist background. Be sure to also check out the link blog post which could be in the description either below, above or to the side depending what device you're using for an exclusive Elizabeth Craft Designs coupon code. So let's get started. So before we get started with our card, I want to talk to you a little bit about Brusho. Brusho is a water-based uh, medium, so it's crystals of colour that react with water to give you some lovely effects. Now I bought this 12 pack to get me started because it's something I used to use at school and I, we used to mix it with PVA to create a stained glass window. Uh, and normally you would take these seals off and you would pull them off and you just tip down the colour. But I only want a small amount of the colour each time. And I found a tip on YouTube somewhere about just putting a hole and a drawing pin in. So I used my tonic craft pick to just pop a hole in the middle of that moulding piece in the middle there. So I just uh, took my tip, uh, pick here, put it down, made my hole, kind of just gave it a little wiggle around so it's a nice size for crystals to fall out. And then I put these drawing pins in and these are the super cheap Amazon basic drawing pins that come in some basic colors as well. So I have color coded mine. So the blues are all blues and purples, yellows, reds, greens, and whites are neutrals. So there's a black there and I think there might be a brown as well. So that just gives me, when I know I'm doing a flower, I know I want to pick out maybe a couple of reds or a couple of greens and so on and so on. So that's how I've decided to organize my brushes. Now brushes will only stick to where you have water. So let me show you what I mean. So I'm gonna pick up some water on my paintbrush and I'm just gonna put down a few drips of water, like so. And there's just a few spots there. Now the water, the brush show will not stick anywhere else. It will just stay as a powder pigment. So let's grab uh, some yellow. We'll use some lemon. Let's take our pin out the top and then we can just shake it down. Now, if you are conservative crafter and lots of us are, uh, you could um, take the seals off and then just put this excess color back in. But as this goes, I'm just gonna blow it off like so. And if I um, have a dry brush, which if I grab here out my drawer, this one's definitely dry, I can just brush this pigment out of the way. So anywhere there's not water, it's not gonna react, it's just gonna stay a brush pigment and I can leave it like so. Where I did have water, it's going to mix. Some of the crystals are gonna stay darker, some of them are gonna stay lighter. You could use this on a palette and mix up paints, or you could actually just mix within the bubbles. You could use your embossing tool to move them around. You'll get some marbled effects on large areas. You can see here, I can use it like paint, or I can just use it like these uh, splotches here, which is what we're going to do on our card shortly. Now the other thing, um, you can mix colors. So I could now add some, let's say some turquoise, and I could add this into a couple of our bubbles. And you can see that I've now got some blue pieces. And if I mix one of those bubbles, they will go into a more of a greeny color. So now I have, that's a nice kind of mermaid color because it's mixed that blue and that yellow pigment together. So there's lots of things we can do uh, with brusho and we'll definitely be expanding our techniques over time. But today we're gonna use them for a background and then we're gonna use them to get some fun effects to color in our flowers. And the other thing I would say is um, following some advice in the Tim Holtz video, if you've seen that on our YouTube channel, Our Hour with Tim Holtz, he said that, um, and it's something that I always find an issue and sometimes I play with it and I like it. But if we use an embossing heat tool, so say for instance, this one that I have here or the Wagner one, which is my favorite one, then this will move um, your water around. As you can see that like, I can push it around and that's also going to mix your color. There is now a Ranger heat tool that is a, uh, just the same temperature, but it does not have the same aggressive um, airflow and it will just dry your pigments exactly how you put on the page. So I have ordered one of those and I will link it up for you. And again, you can see Tim Holtz use it in his video. So let's get started with our card. So 
So first of all, we're going to be doing our background. So this is a piece of Bristol Smooth 100 pound. As always, it will be linked up in the blog post and that may be uh, either at the top side or bottom, depending on what device you're using. But there'll be a video description and an arrow, just click that and you'll be able to see. I have these pre-cut by the FedEx store and I've just used a really thin um, border here because I'll want to chop it down to fit on my card and we're now going to make some pretty patterns. So I'm gonna use my water sprayer and I'm gonna pop some water in my hand here and I'm just going to flick it on. And there is no pattern, I just want some random flicks. And as I just showed you, your brush will only sit where there is that water. And this is the kind of effect I'm going for. Now you can do a more wishy-washy background. You could cover the whole piece in water and get something more like this but we're gonna do something a bit more um, on the, I'd call it a modern side today. So I have two greens, I have emerald green and I have leaf green. And what I did is I just started by putting a little bit all over the place. And you'll see those pigments will start to react. and I'm not paying much attention. And the, the crystals are not green crystals, they're blues and yellows, which is how you get these lovely mixed colors in there. And I want some more water splatters, there's not enough on there. So again, I just sprayed a little bit of water into my hand and I'm going to just place some more water down on my piece. And because I have crystals all over the place, as soon as that water hits those crystals, they're going to react. So I don't necessarily have to put any more pigment over. So. You can now choose, so you can either take a heat tool um, and just dry it as it is. You could take your paintbrush and you could mix a few of them in. So if you wanted to kind of agitate, you can, like this, you can mix colors. But I'm just gonna place this to the side to dry. Um, you could also use your embossing tool, but the thing that you will find is that it will then move your watermarks around, which is not something I want to do on this piece. So I'm just adding a few more bits of water in places where I think otherwise it's gonna come out a little bit bland. Once it's dry, I will then blow away all of the excess um, powder because anywhere that there's not water, it won't have stuck to, but I want to let that dry first. So I'm gonna put this to the side and we'll come back and we'll do our flowers. So on this side of my board, I have taped down the beautiful flowers that I'm using from Elizabeth Craft Designs. And I'm using the lovely poppies here so that you can see how they're gonna come out when they're finished. And I'm gonna show you how to get all these lovely tones and um, textures in them. Now these I did with the rose gold embossing powder from Simon Says Stamp, which I'll link up. And this one I'm gonna do with the white embossing powder that I also used when I was playing around with a few ideas. So then you can get to see a couple of different options. Now you may have seen on our Facebook Lives, I have started using this water well. So I'm just gonna pull it in and show it to you briefly and then I'll move it back. So this is called a rinse well, and again, I'll link them up. This here is full of clean water, and then when this well gets dirty, I just press the plug, it goes down, and it refills automatically with clean water. So when you're water coloring, it's absolutely brilliant. You don't need to keep getting up and down, you don't need to worry about dirty water, and then you just lift this off and empty the tub underneath with your dirty water in. It also has some slots to put your paintbrushes in, and it has saved me a huge amount of time. So we're gonna start uh, just with this left flower first of all. So I'm just gonna take a wet brush with just plain water and I'm gonna color in a selection of the poppies. Now you can see there I had some blue pigment that was left behind from something, but I can water that out. So I can either take a tissue and pick that up or I can just leave it in there um, and cover it with another color. So first of all, I'm just gonna start by adding some color to a couple of areas. And because I'm using embossing here, I can always polish up the embossing powder afterwards. And I want to start with some orange and I only put a tiny bit of orange in, but it just gives you some nice undertones. And I also want to put a little bit of yellow in. So again, I'm just gonna pull the pin out and tap those areas in. Now you can either just leave those as it is, or in this case, I want to blow them away. So excuse my head. And that blows the majority of those pigments away. Now I'm gonna put water in the rest of the areas and then I'm gonna add in my reds. There's still some oranges left behind, but that's fine, it'll water out. And as I say, you can lift them off with a dry paintbrush if you don't want those in your um, area. But I want to get some really fun, fiery colors going in there. So this will be perfect. 
And so I've now added water all over. I'm not worried about going over the edges particularly because also I'm going to die cut these out afterwards because Elizabeth Craft have the coordinating dies that they also sent to me. And one thing I did do though is try to leave some real pure white areas in the middle. So this time I'm going to go and I'm going to start with scarlet and I'm going to just sprinkle in some scarlet and then I'm going to sprinkle in some brilliant red. Now you can mix this in lots of different ways. We could use our paintbrush, we can use a straw to concentrate it, you can just move it around and let the um, pigments move around you can see how that's getting that lovely fiery but I do find just blowing it gives you a lovely um, texture and I like how it's a bit more organic in there now what I'm going to do is I will leave that to partially dry then I'll polish up my embossing powder and then I will fully dry it so let's start on the other one while that one's starting to dry and again I'm going to pick up just a few of the areas just to pick up that yellow and the more water you have the more diluted your color will be and each one is always going to be different but that is the fun of it and the other thing that I did try out and it looks really cool and I'll show you in just a second is you can spritz these with water because it's embossing it's not going to make any difference and these are um, this is on some Bristol smooth so I can put lots of water on here and then I can pick out some colors so again I'm going to pick out some scarlet and I'm going to pick out some brilliant red And you can see these beautiful marblings that you've got and this will all be present afterwards but the key is just giving it that little bit of time to react and just dry a little bit before we pick up some of that pigment and polish off our embossing powder so I'm gonna leave that like that the embossing powder will resist the water so I'm just gonna swirl these around and I want the water under uh, the paper underneath to absorb some of this color. So I'm going to leave this to dry for maybe 10 minutes. Then I'm going to take a paper towel, put it over the top, and then maybe I need to add some more water and keep working on it. But I will come back and show you where we're at once it's dried. So now everything is dried you saw me go back a few times just to get my flower to the intensity that I wanted them now we can assemble our card so I have a piece of Nina solar white that is just the half um, lengthways of a eight and a half by eleven sheet and then I have my background that I've trimmed down to just give it a little bit of a border around the edge I'm not too specific on these I just kind of trim until I'm happy with the piece and we have our two flowers that I cut out using the flower power dies as well I also wanted to show you so you can also do a bigger background here with sort of more like a wash and put the brush show on and also you can do some other flowers so these are what I was playing around with some blues and some purples and I'll put a couple of pictures on the blog as well there so I now need to do a sentiment. Again, I've just got a piece of scrap white cardstock and I'm going to use uh, happiness this time as my sentiment. 
and I'm just going to use my mini misty to stamp that out now if you don't already follow us you can follow us here on YouTube at Hedgehog Hollow you can follow us on Facebook we have daily stamping tips on Facebook which is at Hedgehog Hollow Inc we're on Instagram at Hedgehog Hollow um, and you can also follow us at Hedgehog Hollow on Twitter so I'm just stamping this out with some Versamark and then I'm going to use some fine black embossing powder on this one because I used the white previously. Um, on the other one I used the rose gold exactly the same but on the blog I will link up all the different embossing powders and you can choose which one you want to use for your project. So we'll pop this back in here. I'll also link up my lovely little trays here which are my favourite. And then I'll just clean this off with my stamp chamois. So I'm just going to use my heat tool here to set my happiness. Like that. Oops. And then I'm just going to make a banner piece out of it. So I'm going to chop at the bottom and at the top. And I just again do this purely by eye. I can go back for another card. And then we're ready for when we want to mount it up in a moment. So first of all I'm going to mount on my green piece and I'm just going to use uh, some tape, just a tape runner. This is the Stampin' Up tape runner or you can use the blue Tombow, they're exactly the same. Oh, and this one's run out just at the end. So I'm just going to top it up. Elizabeth Craft Designs sent me some of their sticky adhesive and I've used it on a couple of things and it's really lovely to work with. So I'm just going to top it up in here as well. A really nice tear tape and I was using it to a some glitter and it worked really really well you're going to want to decide what's your top what's your bottom so I'm going to go with this way and I'm going to center that up the best I can so then we need to stick on our poppies or I don't know you could color them in as petunias maybe um, and I overlap my two and just so that I get my overlapping right and my foam dots I just put a couple of glue dots on the back of this one where I know they're going to overlap and I stick the two together. Now I also want to use some gold uh, thread just to kind of break it up a little bit. I used copper on the other one so you could use either and this is not really uh, my area of expertise. Some people use it on their cards and it looks stunning. I always find mine looks a little bit messy. So a few things I have found to do is first of all a couple of more glue dots because when in doubt, glue dots is always the way to go. And I stick a couple in a variety of places and I'm going to just stick these down. There we go. And then what I do is cut myself a length of twine or string or thread or whatever you're choosing to use and then wrap it around and I tried to stick it to my glue dots first because that gives me the opportunity to turn it around and see what's going to stick out, where it's going to stick out, do I need to add some extra pieces in or um, have I got too many ends sticking out somewhere, kind of helps me get that balance a little bit. So I don't want that long piece sticking out there so I'm going to stick that down too, where is it gone? I'm going to stick that to this glue dot here so and I'm fairly happy with that that's sticking out just over here and how people um, manage to do it I just don't know and it always seems to look great on their videos so then I'm going to use some dimensionals and I tend to get a little bit dimensional happy because a lot of these go through the mail and I don't want them to lose that dimension and then we can peel off our backs
and we can stick down our poppies like so. Now the final thing is to add our sentiment and this is going to go just down here. So I'm going to snip a little bit off the side of my happiness. I'm going to make it slightly longer than I want because I'm going to make a snip inwards. So I make a snip in the center and then I snip from the corners to the base of that and that gives me that lovely banner pennant pennant pendant pennant I think uh, design and you can of course make it in any size as well then I'm going to grab a couple more dimensionals like this and I'm going to stick my happiness on and I'm just going to line it up with the edge of this layer just so it kind of all makes sense together then you can fiddle with your threads and just make it add those final touches you could also maybe add a couple of sequins a touch of glitter maybe some darker stamens in the middle there's all sorts of things you could do with this card as I say everyone will come out differently this is with the white and then the black sentiment and then this is with the um, rose gold which I love as well and I just use the love from the same set so this is the um, dream sentiments from elizabeth craft be sure to check out our uh, blog post so hedgehoghollow.co.uk or you can look in the description of this video and we have an exclusive elizabeth craft designs coupon that you can use for all of your purchases so i hope you enjoyed our introduction to brush show and we'll see you again soon happy stamping bye